Let's see if you have the math skills to solve this problem without using a calculator. Okay, so what do we have? Well, we have 3 to the negative 1 divided by 3 to the negative 2 over 3 times 3 squared. Okay, so once again, no calculators, but uh, we do have a multiple choice question. And let's take a look at our answers. So A is 9, B is 1 third, C is 27, and D is 1 over 9. All right, now if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through and uh, solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, here is our problem, and we're not going to be using a calculator. So we have 3 to the negative 1 power divided by 3 to the negative 2 power over 3 times 3 squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer, which, of course, is D, 1 over 9. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A-plus for your knowledge of powers and exponents. And uh, I suspect if you got this problem wrong or if you were confused, it probably had something to do with these negative exponents. But uh, that's not the only aspect of this problem, uh, i.e. Uh, working with um, negative exponents. You also have to know how to divide and multiply and work with fractions as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. And if you didn't get this right, please don't be discouraged. You know, making mistakes or not getting uh, math problems correct is just part of the process of learning. But if you are a math student, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm still in school. I have to pass my math class. Well, if you don't know how to do a problem, right? Let's suppose this was on a test or a quiz. What should you do? Well, if you're saying, I know what I'm going to do, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I am going to guess. Well, that's exactly what you should do. All right, so take a guess. You have a one out of four chance. And the only time you shouldn't guess on a math question, and uh, even in these circumstances, it's still a pretty good idea to guess, is on exams like the SAT or ACT, where you do get penalized for the wrong answer. But uh, typically, that's not even a full point. So it makes sense to guess. Now, what you want to try to do is eliminate some answers if you are going to guess. But in this particular case, you know, the um, question has a bunch of threes in it. So our answer is going to have something to do with three. So if we look at A, well, three times three is nine. That's a pretty good guess. But we have one third. And this has a three in it. And then 27, of course, is three cubed or three times three times three. That's a good guess as well. And then one over nine. Of course, nine is three times three. So really, the, uh, the thing that we need to do here is simply know the math. And of course, uh, that's what this video is all about. OK, so let's go ahead and get started. And uh, as I indicated, most people uh, are going to have a difficult time with this part of the problem if they didn't get this right. So if you're saying, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you read my mind. I'm totally lost. I forgot what uh, these negative exponents mean in math. Well, this is not going to be a problem. Now, let's suppose we didn't have negative exponents, right? So let's just kind of change the problem here. And we have 3 to the first and 3 to the second. Well, this is uh, going to be a whole different ball game, right? Because 3 to the second means what? Well, 3 to the second power means 3 times 3, which, of course, is 9. So you can just kind of replace all these um, powers with their actual numbers. So this would be a 9, this would be a 9, and 3 to the first is simply 3. And now you have just a fraction problem. But unfortunately, we have some negative exponents here. So we're going to have to figure out what uh, these two things right here mean. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about negative exponents in math. And in order to uh, uh, know how to deal with negative exponents, you need to know this little property right here. Now, when you learn how to work with powers and exponents, so for example, 2 to the third power, 3 is the exponent, 2 is the base, the entire thing is a power. Working with powers and exponents is a huge part 
of uh, mathematics, and you typically learn this in like algebra courses. And uh, one of the properties that you need to know, and there is others as well, there's like five. Matter of fact, I just can't help myself as a math teacher. Let me go ahead and show you these real quick. So when you're multiplying powers with the same base, you're going to add the exponent. So the property would be a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. So for example, two to the third times two to the fifth is gonna be equal to two to the eighth because the bases are the same. Okay, when the bases are the same and we're multiplying, we're going to add the exponents, right? So 3 and 5 is 8, so there is the right answer. Now, there is other properties, okay, i.e., other things you need to know about powers and exponents. You need to know the properties uh, to divide powers and exponents and how to take a power to another power. But uh, I don't want to make this video longer than it needs to be. But if you're interested in learning more about powers and exponents, I will give you some specific suggestions uh, in just one second. But first, let's go ahead and focus in on the problem. Now, one of the properties of powers and exponents that you need to understand is how to deal with a negative exponent. So this is the actual property. Now in math, a property is like a law or a formula. So a to the negative n is equal to one over a to the n. So what this is saying is that if you have a power and it has a negative exponent, we can write the, this uh, power with a negative exponent as a, um, a power with a positive exponent. But in order to do that, we have to put this thing over one. Now, this uh, particular property has more to it. Um, in other words, is uh, more that I'd like to be able to teach you, but I'm not going to get into it in this particular video about how to uh, work with this uh, particular property easily. But for our purposes, for this particular problem, we can see that um, we can uh, figure out what 3 to the negative 1 is and 3 to the negative 2 is. So 3 to the negative 1, well, let's just follow the pattern here, right? So 3 to the negative 1 is equal to what? Well, if I have a negative exponent, I want to put this um, over 1, okay? And then I'm just going to write the power down here in the denominator, but it's going to be positive, right? So 3 to the negative 1 is equal to 1 over 3 to the first, uh, and that's a positive 1 right there, or 1 third. Okay, so how about 3 to the negative 2? Well, that's going to be equal to uh, 1 over 3 to the second power, right? So we're just following the property. So 3 to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over uh, 3 squared. Okay, so these are the uh, really the two, um, two parts of um, the problem, this particular problem, where I think a lot of people may have been confused. But now that you understand uh, what 3 to the negative 1 is and 3 to the negative 2 is, we can move on with the problem. Okay, so this is what we have. We have uh, the original problem, 3 to the negative 1 divided by 3 to the negative 2. But now we know that 3 to the negative 1 is the same thing as 1 third divided by 3 to the negative 2, which is 1 over 3 squared. All right, so this is now the problem that we're going to focus in on. And uh, hopefully you have the uh, basic math skills to solve this problem, all right? So if this was your stumbling block, well, let's go ahead and see if you can figure out the rest of this problem. Matter of fact, if you think you can, you should just pause the video and see if you can come up with the right answer. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this right now. And the next thing that we're gonna have to talk about is how to divide fractions, okay? So how do we divide fractions? Of course, we have some power stuff going on here as well. Well, um, again, let me go ahead and just, uh, uh, you know, say that to solve this problem, of course, you need to understand uh, something about negative exponents, but you also need to, you know, just know basic math. In other words, how uh, to divide fractions, how to multiply uh, powers. And in here, okay, or, or this particular uh, problem, what we have is kind of like a complex fraction, right? As a matter of fact, not kind of, but we actually have something called a complex fraction. And a complex fraction is where you have a fraction as part of another fraction, right? Something like uh, this right here. So when you have a fraction as a numerator or denominator, well, then we have what we call a complex fraction, but that's really not all that important. What you wanna do is to think of the numerator or think of this um, problem up here as a separate problem. So we wanna kinda of get the answer to the numerator and then uh, we want to just go ahead and get the entire answer to the denominator. In other words, you're going to try to treat these as separate problems, 
typically, okay? But you're going to see here in a second that we're going to uh, take a couple shortcuts to solve this problem. But let's go ahead and focus in on the numerator. We have 1 3rd divided by 1 over 3 squared. We have to talk about dividing fractions. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, to divide uh, fractions, remember, we're going to have to change uh, this uh, division to multiplication. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to flip the fraction to the right of the division symbol. Okay, so 1 3rd divided by 1 over 3 squared is equal to 1 3rd times, right, we're going from division to multiplication, uh, the fraction 1 over 3 squared, if we flip this upside down, 3 squared becomes the numerator and 1 becomes the denominator. So we have 3 squared over 1 or simply 3 squared. Okay, so now here is our problem and this is going to be very interesting to solve at this point because we can approach this um, uh, the rest of the solution here in two different ways. Well, there's probably other ways as well. And hopefully a lot of you are saying, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is going to be very easy to solve. Well, let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before I show you the solution here. Now, um, I wouldn't stop this lovely math video uh, if it wasn't that important for me to reach as many people as I possibly uh, can. You know, I love teaching math, and to become a math teacher, especially uh, at the high school level, in high school, you're probably familiar that you can actually take, or some students can actually take, like, calculus, right? So you got to know a lot of math to be a high school level math teacher to teach calculus. Typically, you need a math degree. I have a degree in mathematics and a master degree, so it's a lot of, you know, formal education, but really... What uh, has made me, I think, a pretty effective teacher is just experience, right? It's just the years of uh, work and dedication and commitment. And it's the same kind of journey for me on YouTube. I've just kind of been working at it over and over, year after year after year. And over the last several years, I've really kind of uh, committed to YouTube. And, uh, you know, my results kind of reflect that. And it's the same thing with math, right? If you're kind of working here and there, a little bit here, a little bit there, you're not going to get great results. But if you stick with math and you really kind of like immerse yourself in the subject, you're going to do very well, all right? So all of you out there are capable of being fantastic in mathematics. Of course, it's all relative. Some of you are going to, you know, take differential equations in college-level mathematics. Other of you, Others of you just want to pass your math class. But uh, uh, hopefully, okay, you're getting something out of my uh, videos. And uh, I need your help to continue to grow my channel. So please consider hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, um, for what we're talking about here, powers and exponents, this is stuff that you learn in algebra. So uh, check out my full main math courses in the description below. And if you need help with the type of stuff that we're doing in this particular math uh, uh, problem, I'm going to give you a couple suggestions. Uh, one is my Algebra 1 course or my Math Skills Rebuilder course. All right, so I'll teach you everything you need to know about powers and exponents and much, much more. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. And this is going to be very interesting at this stage. So we have a complex fraction here. And some of you might uh, kind of just say, all right, I'm just going to do this math and then do all this math and kind of finish the problem. Now, that's not a bad strategy, but I want you to notice here that we have a number times a number over a number times another number, all right? Now, these two numbers right here, 3 squared, whoop, I kind of raised my fraction bar. Let me put that back in. Uh, so these two are the same number. So these are common factors. So for example, let me just kind of show you another problem. If I had uh, 5 times uh, 3 over 7 times 3, Three. Okay, this is multiplication. Matter of fact, I'll use the same multiplication symbol. We have common factors here. Now, when you have common factors in a fraction, you can cross cancel these uh, factors and you're just left with uh, what uh, remains, right, as the answer. So, in this particular case, it would be 5 over 7. Now, here we have 3 squared and 3 squared. So, if you're saying, hey, Mr. Two Math Man, can we just cross cancel these? Indeed, we can, all right? So, you're thinking in the right way. But that's not the only way to approach this problem. So let me go ahead and show you two approaches. Okay, so here is our problem. We have 1 3rd over 3 squared over 3 times 3 squared. So you could cross-cancel these like uh, factors. If you saw that, 
that's perfect. And then of course, we just have to figure out this part of the problem, which is one third divided by three. Okay, so I'll show you the results of this in just one second. Or you could look at the problem and be like, all right, well, I have in the numerator, one third times three squared, three squared is nine. So this is one third times nine over three times three squared, three squared is uh, nine as well. So maybe you could just evaluate these powers, right? So we have one third times nine over three times nine, which is three squared. So this is fine as well, but you can see here, we still end up with the common factors and we can get rid of these or we can just do the math. The answer will work out the same way. So let's go ahead and do this work right now. Let's start um, with this, um, these steps uh, to the left. So we have one third divided by three. Okay, so this is uh, one third, this fraction bar means divided by three. So let's go ahead and do that right there. So one third divided by three is what? Well, one third divided by three is what? Three over one. We gotta go from division to multiplication, <coughs> excuse me, by uh, flipping the fraction to the right. Boy, I gotta get this, <coughs> um, all this stuff out before my voice goes away, but I'm determined to finish this problem. All right, so we have one third times one over three, right? We gotta flip this fraction to the right. So one third times one third, we're gonna multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So we're gonna have one over nine. All right, so there you go. And hopefully I have enough uh, fuel in my voice <laughs> gas tank to finish this problem. But this is the correct answer. Now, what we could have done here is what? Well, we have one third times nine over three times nine. Now you could cross cancel and we would end up with one third over three, just like we have right here. Or you could do this. You could be like, well, one third times three or three over one is nine over three or three, right? So we have really a three up here in the numerator. One third times nine is three. And then three times nine down here in the denominator is 27. So we have the fraction three over 27, and we can simply just reduce that fraction down to one over nine. All right, now both ways are correct. And if you took a different path, as long as you understand what you're doing, that's what counts, right? But uh, the idea here is that uh, in order to really learn math, to do a problem like this without using a calculator, you're gonna have to obviously know the uh, properties and you know the topics uh, here, which would include fractions, multiplication, division, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, if you don't practice this stuff, you're really not gonna get better at it. So if you really wanna do, or if you really wanna improve in math, you got to practice, practice, practice. And uh, you know, in terms of uh, watching my videos, one thing that I would encourage you to do is to pause the video. Anytime you think you can finish the problem, pause the video, do the work, and see how well you do with the rest of the steps. But hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.